Okay, everybody, thanks for watching this video. Now, some of you are watching this video because it's a continuation in my series on this restoring this 87 Ford L9000. Some of you may be watching this because of the title that it's uh, specifically regarding front air ride on this truck. Now, for those of you in that situation, please, please understand that this is not a working truck. Um, it's a functional truck, it's a project, and it's going to be on the road, already is, technically, but this is not a working truck, it's not over the road, it's not being used every day. So, please bear that in mind that as you're watching this, as I, I, I create and fabricate and design and build this front air ride setup, that, um, you know, it's not intended to be over the road, so take it with a grain of salt. I'm not saying it doesn't work, I'm not saying that... It's not safe or functional, but um, it's not meant to, you know, put a few hundred thousand miles onto. That's not my intention with it. So um, basically just saying, be smart, do what you know is best for your vehicle, um, and understand that, yes, there are kits out there. I just elected to go my own route and make my own, mostly because there are not kits available for L9000s. Um, so I was kind of forced to, but I also just didn't want to pay the money for a kit and then try to adapt it to my purposes. So... Uh, this can be done with um, relative ease, you know, on your own without spending all that money. So, uh, on that note, let's get started on this all project. Right, well, I got the U bolts torched off and used the impact hammer to punch them out through the bottom. So, they're all right there. I'll give you a little better angle here, but um, this spring pack nut was welded, but it spun though. Spun it right past the weld, so no big deal. Hopefully the other side does the same thing, but you can see the wear pads, or the, what do you want to call those, any rattle pads, whatever, the little plastics are still in there. Um, so I'm thinking that now is all that's left is we've got pins. Where's that? we got a pin there that's going to be in that lowermost spring. So I've got to get these torched and out of the way because that U-bolt's gonna come out with the spring. But after that, the two lower springs and my well, my shim plates there are gonna come out and then I'll assess whether those are wedges for, for camber and caster or whether they're just spacers. If they're spacers, obviously I'm taking them out, but if they're wedges, they gotta go back in to keep our caster right. So I'm gonna see what I can come up with. So the springs came out, no problem, nice and easy. I just took those clamps at the back and took my hand sledge and them side to side so the spring could drop out below the other packs they're not going to be reused i'm gonna have to come up with something else there i'm sure i'm gonna go see my local um i got a really good spring company local so i'll take some pictures with me um i want to replace those center bolts anyway they're all rusted and marred up there's no reason to use those over um and i can get some shorter ones that i need anyway and then i'll see if we can get some sort of um i, I know there'll be some sort of tension clamp or something that I can use there. I'll come up with something. It's just all it's doing is locating the spring, keeping it from moving that second spring from moving side to side. So we'll get that one figured out. Um, so really now next step is going to be to, um, I got to mark out my template for those five holes per side so I can drill my, my plate steel and, um, that'll be my top bracket. I think what I am going to do is there were those three spacers on the bottom, I'll show you. So we got one that was on top. I'm going to retain that one on top. I like the idea of having a spacer between my top plate um, and the spring. I don't know why. I just feel like that's a good idea. On the bottom, I was concerned that some of these were shims, but they're just pieces of quarter-inch plate. Um, nothing. No wedges. No nothing. So they're not affecting caster in any way, shape, or form. Got these all marked. Um, I'm gonna turn them opposite of what I initially planned. There's room to go either direction, but in the event that I can use the factory shock mounts that bolt on with the U-bolts or what now will be bolts, which I think I can use, then I need the plate turned this way. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, I just took what was once a larger piece of cardboard and trace the holes from underneath the axle and double checked with um, tape measure two and cut it down to the center point of each hole center that on the plate 
mark the corners, connect the dots. There's our center of each hole. And then the middle is where our uh, locating bolt, locating pin for the spring hole needs to be. That's just a half inch or less, three eighths or so. So that's a easier one to drill even through half inch. So I'm gonna try out this little annular bit that I bought and see what happens. Oh my goodness, guys. I can't tell you how awesome of a bit that is, especially for 30 bucks on friggin' Amazon. I mean, grab my... That was probably, I don't even think it was two minutes. Probably one minute, minute to a minute and a half to drill that. And there's the plug. Spring loaded, pops it right out when it's done. All right, there we go. All drilled. That annular bit is awesome. Uh, I did break the pilot on the very last, literally hole number 10. The pilot snapped when it, I just had a little too much tension on that drill press, so. Um, but that's easily replaced, no big deal. Just a quarter inch drill bit, so. Uh, it is amazing what even something that was only 30 bucks on Amazon, what a carbide bit will do in mild steel. Um, just awesome. This C channel is what I'm going to use for the. Yeah. That might not work, guys. Well, I have to cut it down. Not the, not the end of the world. I'll cut them down a little bit, shape you know, maybe an inch off each one. And then um, so these will sit you know, like that on the axle. And then I can punch a hole in the center of what it ends up being and uh, get a wrench in there to. Uh, um, well, the bag too. So the bag will actually sit on that and then come up and, but I, what I gotta figure out is how that's gotta locate. So we'll, we'll figure it out. Well, poof, just like that. It's tomorrow. Uh, my paint's dry and then my spring plates. I painted one side that way. Once I do my welding up here and get everything set, I can paint this from the top, but primer and paint on those. Um, went to the spring shop. Got my Ford specific, as I found out, um, center bolts for my springs. So I'm going to get after reassembling these spring packs, um, get those bolts cut down once they're on and tight, and uh, see about getting that axle pressed up into place so that we can um, test fit everything and get the airbag located, get the airbag stud cut down, and plan where we're going to put our, our lower bracket. So time to get after it so i've got uh the axle pushed up into place um located in the centering pin pin cut down um everything pulled up nice and tight um got the first plate test fitted everything looks good i'm about to make some cuts on the c channel so this is the lower bag mount um this so you can see that's fully collapsed there or very close to it they give you a really long stud i need a stud that's not even close to that long so um i need to cut it down but i've also first got to figure out i've got to locate these which are going to weld to the top of my plate like so and then that stud will get drilled hole will get drilled on the top of these and you'll be able to put a theoretically anyway put a wrench down in there to uh um it's gonna be a tight fit um but you know the face where this bag sits is actually only on this center section if you look at it that protrudes farther than the rim so um that's all i need is that much width so i am literally going to so i'm literally going to measure that that is a Just over two and a half, two and five eighths inch flange. So that means that's all I need at most there is two and five eighths. God, I'm really good at doing that, aren't I? So if I had two and five eighths, I'm at a total of four inches, you know, so I can lose um, an inch and three eighths off of that. So, um, so that's what we're about to do. So I'll measure out an inch and three eighths, cut these both down in the chop saw. Okay, well, I hope you're gonna be able to see this. Yeah. You can see I, I cut the stud down, um, my C channel, and I'm using the, the cutoffs as spacers. And if you look at it from that direction, 
you know, that's flexible. I can slide the bag either forward or reverse along the frame. So that lines up basically with that center hole. And if you look at it from that direction, you can see it. Once I'm square with the frame, I am, you know, I'm, I'm eyeballing this to a point, but basically this is meant to line up to center onto a spring, just like a spring or a, you know, this, I don't know if it's just pure luck or whatever, but anyway, one or the other, it works out centered on my bolt pattern for my, for my spring and axle purchase. So that makes it really easy um, because I can now pull this plate back off um, and make my locations and know that I just need to line that stud up, even whether I slot it or whatever I do, it's going to work really easy to measure off the truck and make marks and weld and do all that good stuff so um so to give you an idea though that's basically how it'll sit obviously a full compression will be up a little higher right now there's no weight whatsoever on these springs because i've still got cribbing up so we know those are going to compress there's internal bump stops in this bag that's why i used it so it will it will sit on the bag essentially when it's at full compression so you know we've got we've got probably four or five inches to go I can tell you that we are already obviously significantly lower by about two to three inches than we were just from removing those plates so you know all, all in when it's at full dump I bet you we'll get I, I wouldn't be surprised if we had six inches to eight inches of drop over what old static height was um starting to remind me on a different scale of my younger days when I worked on Volkswagens and Volvos and cars, I mean, and did a lot of playing around and lowering them. Had an old 90 Chevy pickup that I had not slammed. I'm not into the slammed look, but I like lowered, tastefully lowered. So this is feeding into my my old uh, my old preferences. So anyway, it's going to look sweet when it's all said and done. Give it a little rake um, and a little drop and she's going to look really good. So I'm going to get that stuff pulled back out of there and uh, do some measuring and figuring on my plates and then we'll get that C-channel drilled and then welded and uh, we can start putting this all together. All right, so I like to just, uh, you can't see them because my clamps are over top of them, but I like to just to drill a single hole with as narrow as these are now, I will have no problem getting an open end wrench into there to tighten or ever loosen back up those airbag bolts. So I'm not gonna deal with trying to slot that. I don't, I don't have the tools to, to do that very easily. So. We're not going to. guys well there's the I won't say final product but both bags installed fittings on ready to plumb and the reason it's hard to see is because I, I just had to mount the wheels and tires put the weight down and you can see I would think the difference there I mean that's with the rear suspension eh, it might not be fully dumped Got to be close though. I don't think there's much of anything in that rear. Let's see here. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's dumped out. And you can see, I mean, that looks that's lower than a 7,000 series truck. So. I'm pretty pumped with how that looks. Got some sweet rake to it. Um, going to look really good with some chrome and some low pros. Um, some stacks. Going to be a sweet truck. It already is. So I still have to plumb it. 
back at you in a little bit with that. Okay guys, so here's the first test of both axle air ride. Okay, so this is what I would probably consider ride height. Um, still a little lower than what it was with full spring suspension. Um, but, you know, you've seen the bags. What I was going to show you was this is what I did here for the solenoids. This was where the ether injection system used to be mounted. It was no longer hooked up anyway. Um, all rusty and crusty and nasty. Uh, this motor, quite frankly, doesn't need ether. Um, and I'm never going to use it. So, um, it wasn't functional, got rid of it. Um, still got to get rid of the cable, but we'll deal with that later. But, um, it was a nice plate, a factory plate that was a standoff off the firewall to mount these two, um, and plumbed everything nice and tight right there. I know it's not the prettiest. It would have been nice to have been just hard plumbed for all this because it's so compact, but it's not, but got the wire still needs to be loomed out and made pretty. Um, but, uh, you know, comes up to our T up here, splits down to both axles. Worked out really nice to have the tank and had a plug right there that I could convert for the feed line into the system. Um, already had, as you guys know, the gauge um, feed was already plumbed through the firewall along with the wires. So, um, yeah, that's it. Simple as that. Nice and clean, nice and neat. And, uh, and that air you hear hissing is my leaky shifter fitting so um so we've got to do shocks still i'll be honest with you these shocks at full compression are still shorter than what i need so i might be using that same part number that's a project for another day it's late and i got an early morning um so i'm gonna let this sit for a minute but uh hey we got the air ride done right um so really it's just the shocks left as uh all that needs to be done so um you know it's not that i got nothing into this there are dollars into it but i have nowhere near the thousand to three thousand dollars that a uh one of the off the shelf kits would be um there isn't one that's technically made for the l9000 anyway um so this would have to be custom regardless but i am so much happier that i spent you know a third of the money um, a third to half the money anyway, and uh, a few hours of my time, which I probably honestly would have had most of that anyway, in making a kit work, and we've got a functional front air ride system, which is pretty stinking awesome, to be honest with you. I'm really excited about this, so there she is.